Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's carry on a little bit uh, because um, we have now gone through the six recollections and what I will do now is go through some things that uh, are alternative ways of giving rise to a bit of joy and happiness. These are the standard ways, uh, but there are also other ways in the suttas. Uh, and so let's look at them. Uh, so the next sutta is uh, with Nandiya, the Nandiya sutta. And uh, Nandiya, not sure uh, who this Nandiya is. It could be the same Nandiya that is a friend of Anuruddha and Kimbila, but uh, I do not know. I haven't done any research on that particular point. Uh, and I uh, don't think it's that important. Uh, and he was a Sakyan, so he was a family member of uh, uh, the Buddha. At one time, the Buddha was staying in the land of the Sakyans. There you are, uh, near Kapilavattu in the Banyan Tree Monastery. Uh, now, at that time, the Buddha wanted to commence the rain's residence at Samadhi. So this is the Vasa, and you're starting the Vasa, the three months when you just stay in one place, according to the monastic code. So the Buddha wanted to enter the rain's in Samadhi. Nandiya the Sakyan heard about this and thought, why don't I also commence the rain's residence at Samadhi? There I can apply myself to my work and from time to time... Uh, get to see the Buddha. So Nandiya here is a he has is obviously a lay person, and not uh, so maybe he ordained later on, or maybe it's a different Nandiya from the friend of Anuruddha. I'm not sure. Uh, so uh, he is going to work, and he's also going to apply himself to the teaching of the Buddha as well. Uh. So the Buddha commenced the reigns resident and Savati, and so did Nandiya. There he applied himself to his work, and from time to time got to see the Buddha. And so one interesting point here is that even the lay people entered the rain's residence. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. So no one really traveled around India at that time. And so this may be the reason why the monastics were not supposed to travel, because even the lay people didn't travel. So why should the monastics travel around India? If the lay people thought it was wrong, then surely it was even more wrong for the monastics in terms of killing living beings or, or whatever it might be. That uh, was the result of that. At that time, several mendicants uh, were making a robe, making a robe for the Buddha, thinking that when his robe was finished and the three months of the rain's resident had passed, the Buddha would set out wandering. So you see this sometimes in the suttas, they are making a robe. And at the end of the rainy season, it's called the robe season in the uh, Binya Pitaka, because that's when the robes are being made. But the, here they're making robes earlier on, uh, presumably to have it ready so the Buddha can uh, set out when he is uh, finished with the rainy season. Uh, Nandiya the second heard about this. He went up to the Buddha, bowed, sat down to one side and said to him, Sir, I have heard that several mendicants are making a robe for the Buddha, thinking that when his robe was finished and the three months of the rain's resident had passed, uh, the Buddha would set out wandering. Uh, now we spend our life in various ways. Which of these should we practice? So, uh, so this is a bit unclear what exactly that means. We spend our life in various ways. I'm not entirely sure what that is supposed to mean. I guess they just do a lot number of things. So, what what should we do? Yeah, uh, what what how should we practice? Basically, I think that's kind of the main meaning here. A uh, little bit unclear. Uh, Good, good, Nandiya. It is appropriate that gentlemen such as you come to me and ask. We spend our life in various ways. Which of these should we practice? Uh, this is similar to what Mahanama said, yeah? But uh, Nandiya, the difference between Nandiya and Mahanama was that Mahanama seemed to have been a Aryan, whereas Nandiya seemed to have been a Putujana, an ordinary person. Uh, and so, uh, in, in a sense, this is perhaps more relatable than uh, the things that were said to Mahanama. So this, which of these should we practice? And uh, this is what the Buddha says, the faithful succeed, not the faithless. The ethical succeed, not the unethical. The energetic succeed, not the lazy. The mindful succeed, not the unmindful. Those with stillness succeed, not, not those without stillness. The wise succeed, not the witless. Witless as the, uh, the uh, without wit, without... Wit or sometimes means sense of humor, but I don't think that's what it means in this case. So, so uh, maybe we should show this to Ajahn Brahm. He probably he might interpret it as a sense of humor. <laughs> so, uh, 
So these are six qualities that everyone should develop. Yeah, and you can see there. Uh, some of these are very obvious. Uh, energy is an interesting one. It's good to be an energetic person. Uh, energy is always a positive thing in life, uh, and it will uh, lead to success uh, in one way or another. So whether as a lay person or not, if you apply yourself in general, you will also be able to apply yourself to the Dhamma. It means the mind is more going to, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of... Um, uh, investigating more and more involved with the Dhamma because you have the energy behind it. Uh, and this is one of the things you find also with people who are gone a long way on the path. They often have a lot of energy, uh, yeah, endless amount of energy. Uh, uh, you visit someone like Ajahn Ganha and he kind of just energy, energy, energy is like this radiant, radiant sun at all times. Uh, and then sometimes he gets a bit tired, he goes back and he, I guess he meditates a bit and the energy is restored. Uh, and then he kind of emerges from his uh, room, yeah, re-energized and uh, spreading his energy around again after that. Uh, so energy is an important thing. Yeah? And uh, energy rises very often. You have to start applying yourself and eventually the energy becomes sustained. Uh, uh, but uh, it is not always obvious uh, that uh, energy is not the same as uh, Effort. Uh, yeah, effort is often when we try, uh, whereas energy is more like the natural energy of the mind uh, that emerges from effort, from applying yourself in the right way. Uh. So here you have mindfulness succeed. Uh, yeah, mindfulness succeeds and not the unmindful. Uh, and uh, that mindfulness arises from the preceding fact, the preceding characteristics here. There is a particular sequence in this. Uh, yeah, this is not a random sequence again. Mindfulness emerges from things like faith and ethics and energy. Because of that energy, you tend to be mindful. Because you're ethical, you tend to be mindful. Faith, faith means faith in a certain way of living, a certain way of doing things. And again, that makes you mindful as a consequence. And then uh, those with samadhi succeed, not those without samadhi. And the why succeed, not the ones who are without wisdom. So, uh, and remember the wisdom we're talking about here, again, there's things like, things that we have been talking about before uh, on this retreat, the development of the perception of the three characteristics, for example, anicca, dukkha, anatta, impermanence, uh, suffering and non-self is very much at the very core of what that uh, wisdom means. And these are, that is, these are things that you can develop at least to some extent, even in your uh, ordinary kind of life. So these are the six qualities, yeah. But now we come to really what, uh, why I was looking at the sutta. Once you have them, yeah, uh, when you are grounded on these six things, you should develop five, th five further things. What are those fi five further things? You should recollect the realized one, yeah. Furthermore, you should re you should recollect the dhamma. And so here you see that uh, this is also for. Ordinary people, not just for the Aryans, uh, to have this kind of recollection. Uh, and so you recollect the uh, uh, Buddha and Dhamma is for everyone. Uh. But now comes the interesting one. This is where there is a slight change. Uh. Furthermore, you should recollect your good friends. Uh. These are the Kalyanamitas. Uh. Yeah? So now it's not the Sangha, now it is the Kalyanamitas instead, uh, which is kind of fascinating. Uh. And the way you recollect your good friends is, is as follows. Uh. I am fortunate, so very fortunate, to have good friends who advise and instruct me out of kindness and compassion. In this way, you should establish mindfulness internally based on good friends. And this is interesting because sometimes, as I mentioned before, the Sangha is slightly abstract. Who is the Sangha? Who are these Aryans? Who are these people that actually know the Dhamma fully? And it can be very hard to really pinpoint those people. But what you do know is you know who are your Kalyanamitas. That's kind of more obvious uh, because these are the people around who support you and who uh, kind of lead you in the right direction. Uh, and first and foremost, the Buddha himself. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Sangha members and then all the people in your community who are Buddhists uh, who kind of bring you forward. Uh, these are all your Kalyanamitas. Uh, Kalyana means like beautiful and Mitta literally means a friend. Also the word behind Metta or... Uh, uh, you know, loving kindness is mitra. And so uh, this is the, uh, the idea here. All of these kalanamittas, starting from the Buddha all the way down to the most humble kind of friend you have in the spiritual life, all of these are 
part of these Kalanamitas. And again, you see this beautiful way of thinking about this that I mentioned before when we talked about generosity. I am fortunate, so very fortunate, to have these good friends. Yeah, it's such a nice way of thinking about it. It's so easy when you're part of a spiritual community, so easy when you're part of the BGF and your friends around you, uh, to forget about this, uh, to forget about how what a wonderful thing it is to be part of this um, group, uh, this large community of Buddhists. Uh, and because that group exists, because the Buddha exists, uh, sometimes all you have to do is to stay in the slipstream, yeah, the slipstream of this kind of momentum of the Dhamma and the Sangha and everyone moving forward. Uh, and when you are in the slipstream, like you are bicycling kind of behind a big truck or something, you get pulled along. Yeah, this is what slipstream means. And so when you are in the slipstreams of the Kalanamittas, it's like you get pulled along with everyone else. And this is the idea of being fortunate. Yeah, the idea of you are being conditioned in the right way. Or the conditioning is always heading in the right direction. And those people who don't have that, they don't have that opportunity to be conditioned as well as you have. And sometimes they've been conditioned outrightly badly. Yeah? So what a wonderful thing it is to understand the power of Kalyanamitta, understand the power of having people in your life that actually make sure that you're heading in the right direction. This is a great fortune. And of course, if you think like that, then you will never really have any negative thoughts about the people around you. Yeah, because you realize that you are, actually this is a great boon and great blessing in life to have this kind of companionship that you have. And this is a beautiful way of thinking. To see if you can make these kind of thoughts in your life about your fellow Buddhists, the people around you, including the Buddha and including the, anyone else in your life that pull you in the right direction. Why? Because they advise and instruct me out of kindness and compassion. This is the idea with a, an ideal friend, an ideal teacher. They're always acting out of kindness and compassion. Any advice and instruction they give is to help. And it's not because they have a need to impress or a need to, they are upset with you and so they have to tell you off or whatever. It's always coming from the right place. That is where the advice and instruction comes from. And that is when it is powerful because you feel whether other people have your interest at heart or not. Are they interested in you or are they just coming from some sort of self place where they want to instruct and they want to advise because of their own uh, sense of ego or their own sense of anger or whatever it might be. Yeah. So uh, again, very, um, a very beautiful way of thinking about uh, um, the people who are supportive in our lives. Uh, I am so fortunate, so very fortunate to have such good friends. Uh, And then we have the last ones again. Furthermore, you should recollect your generosity and you should recollect the deities. So here the uh, uh, sila is missing. And uh, so uh, because it only has five factors. Uh, and uh, so um, there you are. So this is the last recollection in this particular sutta. A noble disciple who has these 11 qualities gives up bad, unskillful qualities and doesn't cling to them. Yeah, so you're always going to cling to something, you're always going to grasp something. Yeah. And so you can see here you stop grasping the unskillful and instead you hold a little bit onto the skillful instead. Uh, and that will take you forward on the path. Uh. It's like when a pot full of water is tipped over, so the water drains out and doesn't go back in. Uh. Yeah, if you are full of water, if you are full of good qualities, uh, the bad qualities don't come back in again. Uh. Yeah, the... the uh, the water has gone out. It doesn't come back in again. So uh, suppose there was an uncontrolled fire. It advances burning up dry woodlands and doesn't go back over what it has burnt. Yeah, so once you have given up these bad qualities uh, and you have kind of filled yourself up with good qualities, uh, you don't really go back there again because it's as if they have been burnt up. Yeah, the bad qualities are kind of burnt up in you. I mean that, uh, remember this is only temporary because the woodlands, what happens in the woodlands is that the grass comes back again after a time and then the fire can start again. So you have to be, still be careful, but at least temporarily it has been burnt up. 
And so the more you fill yourself with these positive qualities, uh, again, you are stopping the bad qualities from re-arising because there's no fuel for the bad qualities. The fuel has disappeared. Uh, and now you're only filled with positive qualities instead. Uh, so nice little similes there to show you how this path can really be, um, be um, uh, kind of sustained in the longer run yeah, by, by filling yourself up with good qualities. Uh, in the same way, a noble disciple who has these 11 qualities gives up bad, unskillful qualities and does not cling to them. All right, so uh, let's do a little bit more meditation before we uh, do some final Q&A and then break for lunch afterwards. So. Okay, so um, let us just take any uh, final questions and comments before we break for lunch. Uh, so, uh, in this last sutra, uh, I'm just curious yeah. uh, that Sila was taken out because if you look at the remainder, I think of Sila and, and generosity. Probably and the devata. Probably devata has the least impact on our uh, the way we live our life. Uh -huh. uh, and the thing that yeah. that crossed my mind is that in Aguttara Nikaya there are only up to eleven elements. So if they added sila, there would be twelve. So they probably have to remove one during a transmission <laughs> or something. That's what I guess. Yeah. And if, I'm just wondering yeah. why it was sila that was taken out. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I um, I don't know. It may just be that, uh, uh, yeah, it's possibly because sila is, um, generosity is quite easy to contemplate, I think. It's very easy to feel joy in, in giving. Yeah? It's kind of very obvious. Uh, uh, it is not perhaps so easy to feel the joy in, 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 through a general living well. It's not so easy. Uh, and very often, you, you know, our sila may not be pure enough. Sometimes we see the negative or whatever. Uh, so maybe it is simply a focus on what is where it is easier to find joy. Maybe see like actually it is more difficult. To, uh, it could be the could be the reason. Huh? But I think it's a little bit yeah. It is it is a little bit random. It does seem a bit random. I agree with you. Huh? Yeah. Huh? So. Um, mm. Good morning, Ajahn. Good morning, yeah. Ajahn. I just wondering, like um, all the vital and also sila is so important, like to make us peace and calm and then meditate, right? And I, I don't understand. Yeah. One thing is like Buddha's brothers. He is not in maybe not keeping precept or anything. Why? Why can got psychic and then can? I think it's through meditation also. Why? they can achieve some things like psychic and so on. I, I was just wondering, can Ajahn please explain or not? Yeah. Thank you. Well, I, I don't think he's not doing uh, morality. I think he, he's living a moral life. He's just not using it as a recollection here. Uh, yeah? Is that what he meant? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's just the idea that for some reason the recollection is not used. Uh, they're not actually recalling the ethics. But that doesn't mean he's not acting, living morally. If I think if you look at the the six qualities before, one of the six qualities is actually, is mm. ethics. Yeah, so if you go back to the, um, the six qualities that he has, yeah, so the, where, where the Buddha says, uh, the faithful succeed, the ethical succeed, the energetic succeed, mindful succeed, the, the ones with stillness succeed, and the wise succeed. So he's absolutely should be ethical, um, but for some reason the recollection of ethics is not included uh, in the uh, in the recollections afterwards. Uh. Then, then why the wisdom is not there? Is if the wisdom is there, then maybe yeah. you won't use the psychic for not the, good purpose. The psychic, I mean, the psychic? A psychic power, yeah. like use the elephant. Got the story like uh, the 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 Buddha's cousin. Want yeah. to kill Buddha when the elephant want to raise its leg? Ah, and, of the ah, Devadatta, Devadatta. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, so that's I don't a, understand about that. Yeah. Huh. Uh, okay, so you are asking about Devadatta now. Is that uh, what you're asking about, Devadatta? Uh, yeah. Uh, so how how he could be uh, have have so much um, uh, 
uh, samadhi and wisdom or whatever and not having any ethics. That, that's that what you were asking about. Yes, okay. yes, yes. yes All right. right. Okay. Okay, now I see. So it's a slightly diff okay, slightly on the different place. So what, hap what is happening there is that uh, sometimes you can be very successful in meditation, but over time you can lose that success in meditation. Uh, and especially if there are some very powerful temptations arising in your life. Uh, those temptations can be so strong that they override your spiritual qualities. Uh, I think that's what happened with Devadatta. He, he, be, he got the king to be his disciple. Yeah? King Ajatasattu became his disciple. And he probably felt proud and he got conceited and all of these kind of things. Uh, and then he thought, well, if the king is my disciple, I should be leading the Sangha. Yeah? I should be parallel with the king. The king leads society and I lead the Sangha. And so he got very ambitious, and that ambition and that um, uh, corruption of the mind that happened through that uh, destroyed his spiritual qualities. Uh, so he was ethical, and then he became unethical because of uh, the temptations of uh, society around him. Uh, that's probably what happened. Uh, yeah. Good morning, Ajahn. Good morning, Ham. Um, going back to the ethical conduct, like generosity and kindness, yeah. there is a saying that uh, one has to be cruel to be kind. How is that appropriate to <laughs> <laughs> the conduct? Yeah, so I think that is where the, uh, the simile, you know, I think I mentioned that before as well, of the simile of uh, if you have a child who is choking on a piece of meat or something like that, uh, if the child is choking, that even if you have to put your finger into their throat and pull out the meat, that is better than the child dying. Yeah? So that means that you are a little bit cruel for the long-term benefit, because uh, may, you may end up drawing blood or whatever because you are you know, sticking your, your finger down the throat. Uh, so sometimes you have to be direct. Sometimes you have to say things that are you know, uh, kind of uh, you know, like the Buddha would tell the monks certain things you can't do, you can't do, and that probably wouldn't be nice for the monks. They probably didn't want to hear that, uh, but still you have to hear it. Uh, otherwise you may never actually, never actually know what is right and what is wrong. Uh, so sometimes you have to say things that the other person may not be pleasing to the other person. Uh, and uh, I think that is kind of what, where it is coming from. Uh, yeah? So you're saying to your, chi your child that, uh, no, that you, sorry, you can't do that. Uh, but the thing is that, you know, you, when you say things that the other person doesn't like, it doesn't mean that you are not being kind. Yeah? You're still coming from compassion. It's just that if you come from anger, that's where you go wrong. Yeah? But as long as you're coming from compassion and you're coming from a degree of wisdom as to what is right and wrong, then you can't really, uh, then you are on the right track yeah? regardless. Uh, so you should always come from compassion in a sense. That's an important point here. Yeah? Coming from anger, that's where we usually go wrong. Yeah? Yeah. Just, just a quick one may not be very important, but just now you mentioned yeah. about the previous, uh, in the previous sutta about the gods, the different gods having yeah. learning, and then you mentioned that it's dhamma related to dhamma. I always thought I, I didn't know whether uh, you know all the god heavenly realms is only for. I mean, all the gods believe in Buddha. Is that right? I just uh, not not necessarily, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so that's a good point actually. Uh, so you. Um, I, but I think the point here is that uh, that faith will be helpful to be reborn in the heavenly realms. That's true. Not, not all the gods are. Some of them are you know, Christians or some of them are atheists or whatever. That's true. Yeah. So they don't have that kind of learning. But uh, certainly the learning of the Dhamma will be helpful uh, because your mind will be kind of going in the right direction. Uh, and so I think it's probably you are probably better off being a Buddhist if you want to be reborn in the heavenly realm than if you are an atheist or, or whatever, you're probably, probably better off uh, because your mind has more, it more kind of uh, directed in the right way, if you like. Yeah. But uh, yeah, not absolutely required. Okay, shall we uh, break for lunch? Let's break for lunch uh, and uh, we'll see you back in at two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah.